This week, Donald Trump is learning the hard way that actions have consequences. And with every action you take, there's going to be a reaction. And it was evident that in the event the U.S. moved out of northern Syria, Turkey was going to invade. And Donald Trump announced that in spite of the risks, he'd be moving out of northern Syria. And Turkey did exactly what we expected them to do invade. And now there is a lot of death and destruction as a direct result of Donald Trump just making a decision seemingly on a whim. So as Darren Butler and Orhan Koskin of Reuters report, Turkey pounded Kurdish militia in northeast Syria for a second day on Thursday, forcing tens of thousands of people to flee and killing at least dozens of people in a cross-border assault on U.S. allies that has turned the Washington establishment against President Donald Trump. The offensive against the Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, led by Kurdish YPG militia, which began days after Trump pulled U.S troops out of the way and following a phone call with Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan opens one of the biggest new fronts in years in an eight-year-old civil war that has drawn in global powers. The SDF said Turkish airstrikes and shelling had also killed nine civilians. In an apparent retaliation by Kurdish-led forces, six people, including a nine-month-old baby, were killed by mortar and rocket fire into Turkish border towns, officials in southeastern Turkey said. The International Rescue Committee said 64,000 people in Syria have fled since the campaign began. Now, because I like to put human faces to crises like this, because I think it's a good way of showing how certain things affects human beings in a really concrete way, I want to play a clip from CNN International where they kind of show you the chaos that's unfolding and how many people are currently trying to flee the area. This is about a day and a half old, but nonetheless, it still kind of gives you a sense of what's going on and the terror that a lot of people are feeling. We're here on the road out of the town of Ras Al Ain, and as you can see, it is a chaotic situation. The streets, roads just choked full of cars filled with families desperate to get out of here. None of them understanding exactly what is going on, what has happened, what the intention of this Turkish military strikes are. We saw at least six big plumes of black smoke with our own eyes, at least one building that appeared to be on fire. And these people are now fleeing to try to get to safety, but they don't know exactly where safety might be. And let's just take a talk and ch chat to these people quickly. Assalamu alaikum, marhaba, keep going. Men wayn kun? Hey, ana asifi, ana asifi, akid. Khaifin, Yanni, are you afraid? Khaifin, ana akfal. They're saying that they're frightened for the children, and you can imagine why. Look at the sky, it's thick with black smoke. There have been strikes for the last couple of hours. Kem infajarat kan? Kutir. Kutir, kutir. So they're saying there were many different explosions. She's saying there were many explosions. It was coming from shelling artillery. They're now trying to get out. And they don't know where they're going or where they might be able to sleep tonight. Clarissa Ward, CNN, outside Ras Al Ain, Syria. So people are scared. Thousands are fleeing. And now people are dying. And we are seeing... A confrontation between the Kurds and Turkey. And as the Reuters article pointed out, it's drawing in global powers. So let me just stress here that this is a very complex issue that requires nuance. This isn't just pro-war, anti-war. You know, if you're anti-war, then pull out. If you're pro-war, stay in. This goes deeper than that. Um, this is an issue that is tricky, right? Because if you are against war, if you are against war because you think that it's immoral, because it causes death and destruction, then it makes sense to want to pull out. But it's kind of counterintuitive to suggest that maybe we should stay there if that means technically we're an occupying force that's there illegally to begin with. But, you know, someone who I really respect, Noam Chomsky, actually argued that U.S. troops should stay in Syria in order to protect the Kurds. And if you're anti-war and acknowledge that we shouldn't be involved in every single country, then it seems counterintuitive to support this. It seems like a little bit contradictory for an anti-war advocate like Noam Chomsky to say this. But here's the thing. You have to think, why do we not like war to begin with? Because whenever there's a war, there's a guarantee that there will be death, 
destruction and human suffering. It's all about human beings. We don't want sentient beings to suffer. And that's why we are against war. And what I usually say, because, you know, what a lot of people do is they make the case for war on humanitarian grounds. And that's really difficult to argue against because people don't understand that humanitarian wars don't exist, right? If they did, then I would be advocating for us to be peacekeeping forces to protect the Rohingya and Uyghurs, but that's just not a reality. Like, most times when the U.S. military intervenes in a country, we always make matters worse. So if there's a humanitarian crisis, we end up leading to more destruction and death. But in this instance, in this unique, complex instance, the U.S.'s presence, even if it was illegal, was actually stopping death and destruction, which means that we have to think more deeply. We can't just be, you know, anti-war and pro-war in this instance. We have to be driven by a desire to protect human life. And in this instance, if we have evidence that withdrawing troops from northern Syria would lead to a possible genocide and what's happening now, then I think that the humanitarian in us, even if we are instinctively anti-war, should do what protects life. And that means staying in northern Syria while maintaining the position that we should get out as soon as possible, but not do it in an idiotic way like Donald Trump and not even try to set up some type of long-term contingency plan. So because I personally am guided by a desire to protect human life, I am going to have to side with Chomsky here. I think that, you know, to prevent genocide from happening, to prevent what's happening now from happening, the troops should have stayed there, albeit temporarily until we figure something else out. But it doesn't matter. You know, that's kind of, uh, that's all said and done, right? It doesn't matter what we want because Donald Trump already made the decision. It was a hasty decision that was essentially, uh, I'm assuming anyways, influenced by a phone call he had with Tayyip Erdogan. And now we're to a point where, you know, we're looking at even more death and destruction because he pulled out. You know, what was largely viewed as the anti-war move is going to lead to more war, you know, which, which is weird. It's, it's why this situation requires, you know, more nuance and more deep thinking here. Now, Donald Trump tweeted, we have one of three choices, send in thousands of troops and win militarily, hit Turkey very hard financially with sanctions, or mediate a deal between Turkey and the Kurds. So think about what this has led to. He is vocalizing his intent to possibly escalate with a NATO ally. And this isn't just going to be like a dispute between the United States and Turkey. Like, this will draw in global powers. If you think that Israel and Saudi Arabia and Russia won't be involved, then, you know, you're naive. So the situation now is worse than anyone could have imagined. I've been a longtime advocate of saying we need to get out of all these countries. But that doesn't mean that we just do it willy-nilly without a plan and we do it idiotically. Like, you can't just withdraw and, you know, not expect any negative repercussions. Now, it's going to be the case that a lot of ISIS fighters could be freed as the Kurds have to turn their attention to Turkey. And now this could involve a dispute between the United States and Turkey. It's, it's a disaster. Staying there was a better option than conflict with Turkey, potentially. Which is why, you know anti-war individuals are sympathetic towards this position that may be staying in at least temporarily until we figure out a better plan and get UN peacekeeping sources there was the preferable move. And now it's just a complete disaster. It's a clusterfuck and a potential nightmare situation. It's already a nightmare scenario, right? But it could get worse if global powers start really having a proxy war here. Um... So I'll leave that there. We are looking at, you know, a situation where we're far worse off and Donald Trump may escalate with Turkey now. And, you know, he can argue that he's doing it because he wants to protect the Kurds, but we all know that Donald Trump doesn't care about genocide. He vetoed the bill that would have ended the United States' complicity in the Yemeni genocide, Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen. So he doesn't care. Um, but now we have this man-child uh, potentially navigating you know, a really huge conflict now. We don't know how this is going to play out, right? But I'm just telling you, pay attention. Because if you're anti-war, then we may get more war now because of what Donald Trump did. So it's not good enough to just say, I'm a non-interventionist, I'm anti-war. He needs to understand 
how to navigate foreign policy. He needs to have a coherent ideology politically and a strategy and know about the complex geopolitical issues going on in these regions so that way he can stop why we all care about stopping wars to begin with. Stop death and destruction. That's the goal. So if he's not going to do that, then being anti-war effectively is pointless. So we'll just, you know, we'll pay attention to this and watch, but um, I'm not optimistic now. This looks like it's it's turning into a horrible situation.